Good morning everyone, I am Filippo Maggioli, a PhD student at La Sapienza under the supervision of Professor Emanuele Rodolà. Today I'm going to present you the work we made in collaboration with Simone Melzi, Michael Bronstein and Max Ovsianikov. The work is about improving signal approximation and transfer on meshes by using orthogonalized products of Laplace Schanagen functions. So in recent years mesh became more and more dense and today 20,000 vertices is a standard for the video game industry where we, we require real-time processing. So the problem we are facing is that the volume of data increases more rapidly than the hardware capabilities and spectral geometry simply does not scale anymore. What we are requested to do is to find new pipelines or refining existing ones in order to address even classical problems such as texture transfer and matching. Before we go on with the presentation, let me introduce some of the main tools we are going to use. And the first, of course, of course is the Laplace operator. We are talking about an operator acting on scalar functions that comes from the composition of the gradient, the direction of the steepest increase for a function, and the divergence that represents a vector field's flow expansion. So the Laplacian, the intuitive meaning behind it, is that it represents the flux density of the gradient of a function. Coming from the composition of linear operators, the Laplacian uh, itself is also linear. And since its domain and range corresponds, then it makes sense to search for eigenfunctions. In fact, it turns out the Laplacian is equipped with a countably infinite set of eigenfunctions, each one associated with its own eigenvalue. The Laplacian eigenfunctions are all in the form of products of signs of the coordinates, and we can easily check that, in fact, if we apply the gradient and then the divergence, we get back the same function but scaled by some constant factor. Laplacian operator can be extended to curve the domains, and in this case we refer to it as Laplace Beltrami operator. Laplace Beltrami operator acts then on a scalar function on meshes, and it is also equipped with a countably infinite set of eigenfunctions. The nice property about these eigenfunctions is that they span the entire sp space of square integrable functions, so any signal on the mesh can be represented as a weighted sum, a linear combination, of Laplace and eigenfunctions. Sometimes we are able to represent signals with a, a, a finite linear combination, and some others we require the entire countably infinite basis. This basis comes in very handy when we approach the problem of transferring signals between meshes. And this per se is a very difficult task, but we say that we can decompose signals into linear combination of eigenfunctions. So if we are able to find some matrix C that maps the eigenfunctions from the source shape into linear combination of eigenfunctions on the target shape, then transferring the signal is only a matter of reconstructing by using the same coefficients. However, even if this approach works in principle, in practice, for higher frequency signals, we require a lot of eigenfunctions. If we are restricted to a small basis, then what we can get is at most a low-pass approximation. Often, this low-pass approximation is not enough to meet the, st the quality standard we require for the application. Finally, let me talk about eigenproducts. Eigenproducts are uh, nothing but pointwise products of eigenfunctions, and they have been introduced in the, in the area of applied geometry and geometry processing by Nognang et al that used the eigenproducts to extend the expressive power of the Laplacian eigenbasis. Despite the great, the great advances made by the work, uh, the authors miss a comprehensive theoretical analysis. So this pushed us into the step of study analytical properties of eigenproducts 
and integrating existing results from literature. Uh, the first result I am showing you here is uh, um, it, com it comes from our analysis and relates the eigenproducts frequencies with uh, the sum of the eigenvalues. This gives an intuitive explanation of why eigenproducts are so good at um, increasing the expressive power of the Laplacian eigenbases and you can see that in fact their frequencies are evenly distributed and lies at, every, at a very high value. The second one comes from Steiner Berger et al and the theorem states that as we add more and more eigenfunction to the basis or we increase the product order then the eigenproducts becomes less and less informative until eventually they will not provide any additional information. Combining these results with our empirical analysis, we were able to give some quantitative indication on how to choose the product order or the number of eigenfunctions for the basis. It turns out that after the fifth order, products are no more informative and the eigenproducts perform better when uh, they are restricted to a smaller basis. Despite working very well, unfortunately, eigenproducts come also with many issues. The main one is that they are not orthogonal, as we show here by, um, pre uh, by presenting the matrix of inner products. Um, in fact, it turns out uh, eigenproducts are not even linearly independent, so the basis is not full rank. And this can be a real problem when we approach tasks such as approximation and transfer. In fact, being the basis not full rank, the embedding process requires uh, uh, to rely on uh, uh, heavy computational methods such as a singular value decomposition and the solution of least squares problems. Our idea was then very simple and yet effective. We take the item products basis and we apply the Gram Schmidt orthogonalization algorithm. This algorithm leaves us with a fully orthogonal basis that spans the entire uh, the entire space spanned by the eigenproducts. The orthogonal basis comes with several benefits. The first one is that we reduce the computational complexity of the embedding process. In fact, a singular value decomposition is quadratic in the number of vertices, while the Grange-Schmidt algorithm is quadratic in the number of eigenproducts, which is uh, in general much, much smaller than the number of vertices. Also, um, by not fully relying on uh, numerical methods in the entire pipeline, uh, the orthogonalized basis shown to be much more stable than the eigenproducts basis, so especially when we work with uh, order higher than two. And finally, uh, the orthogonalization cuts off all the linearly dependent vectors and leaves us with a smaller basis to work with. This, in turn, is one of the reasons that reduces uh, even more the computational complexity. After the orthogonalization, we, we are left with a matrix Q that contains the orthogonal basis and a matrix R, lower triangular, that contains the coefficients that we can use to reconstruct the original eigenproducts basis from the, orthogonal, the, from the orthogonalized eigenproducts. Being orthogonal, using it is different from using the Laplacian eigenbasis. We can embed some function by transposing the basis, and if we want to uh, reconstruct the original function, then we only have to left multiply the embedding by the orthogonal matrix. matrix. And also, the functional map approach can be generalized to the eigenproducts by defining some transfer matrix O that properly, um, that properly represents uh, orthogonalized eigenproducts from the source shape with linear combination of orthogonalized eigenproducts on the target shape. 
we can easily derive an analytic expression for this matrix O, but um, that relies on the um, on C tilde, uh, that is a functional the extension of the functional map to uh, naive eigenproducts. But unfortunately, since the coefficient matrices R are full of zeros and small values, inverting them leads to a very unstable and reliable results. So we need to rely on point-to-point um, -point maps induced by a nearest neighbor search in the space of the eigenproducts to build our transfer matrix. Despite the strict dependency on the eigenproducts relation, Mm, the orthogonalization process seems to positively affect the stability of the entire method. In fact, in this example, we try to reconstruct the coordinates by injecting noise in the functional map. So we can see that as we inject more and more noise, the Huygen products approach uh, leads to uh, very unstable results and reaches very high error values. However, uh, on the other end, uh, the orthogonalized basis uh, proved to be much more robust to, to noise and performs even better than the standard Laplacian eigen basis. The high stability provided by the orthogonalization allows us to use higher order um, to, to, to in the approximation process. Notice how we can uh, highly increase the reconstruction quality with only three eigen function by simply uh, increasing the product order. Also, notice that the difference between the first and second order in terms of quality is much more evident than the difference between the fourth and the fifth order. This uh, is aligned with what we saw in the steiner bergers theorem uh, on how about uh, the, the increasing in the order that reduces the information led by, led by the Hagen products. Uh, the robustness to noise can be visually appreciated in many examples. Um, especially when we talk about transfer of bounded domain signals like RGB signals. Look how with uh, the Huygen products uh, the, the result is very unstable and starts to lack many of the original information while the orthogonal basis um, even by using uh, uh, even by being much smaller than the naive eigen products basis performs much much better. Overall, the orthogonalized eigen products proven to be very uh, very stable and highly reliable, both for reconstruction and transfer tasks. Here we present the table summarizing our results on multiple instances. Um, the methods we are comparing. In, uh, in the order they appear on the columns are the Laplacian eigenbases with k eigenfunctions, the eigenproducts of nth order between k eigenfunctions, and their orthogonalized counterparts. And in the last column, we show as a reference a Laplacian eigenbasis on, of m, n times k eigenfunctions. What we see from, from, the, from this table is that the orthogonalized eigenproducts are able to overcome even the, um, the extended, the, the large eigenbasis. And we can see this especially on the heat kernel and the short descriptor uh, for the reconstruction task, and the heat kernel and the AWFT descriptor for the transfer task. About transfer, this is the task where we can where we can see the the higher difference between the the, the eigenproducts before and after the orthogonalization. Especially looks at, at the heat kernel signature, the shot, and the AWFT descriptor. Another analysis from our work is about the robustness to spectral perturbation. Here we show an example 
where we try to reconstruct a shape using the naive eigenproducts and the orthogonalized eigenproducts, but we inject more and more noise in the spectral domain. So look how eigenproducts, as we add more noise, becomes uh, approaches to a more uh, meaningless solution, while the orthogonal basis is able to preserve the overall shape, even if it is a bit distorted. Finally, um, we want to show that such an increase in the descriptive power as the one provided by extending the eigenbasis with orthogonalized eigenproducts allows us for searching solutions to problems that otherwise are not even addressable. Here we, we show two, example, two examples where we try to transfer details between textured shapes belonging to the same class. In the first row, we try to transfer the, the details on the first sphere to the second textured spheres by ignoring its texture. And in the second one, we are trying to transfer details from a, a textured donut to a, shined don to a shaved donut. Look how eigenfunctions are not even able to approach a solution, uh, and the eigenproducts uh, provide a, a meaningless solution. On the other hand, uh, our orthogonal basis is not able to produce a perfect result, but still, it, it, mm, the results it produces uh, are high quality and we can uh, recognize the, the, the details of the original shape. This concludes our presentation. Uh, if you have uh, any question or are interested in further details, you can either read the full paper or contacting us. Um, so thank you for your attention.